This week on Outdoor Oklahoma, we spend some time fishing one of the most scenic and popular areas in the state, the Blue River. Discover what makes this area a must-see on your bucket list of adventures, right now on Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. The Blue River Public Fishing and Hunting Area in South Central Oklahoma is easily one of our state's prized gems. It's just under 3,300 acres, making it on the small side of our wildlife management areas. Yet what it may lack in size is certainly made up for in sheer beauty and popularity. It's often argued to be our most visited WMA in the state. While there are hunting opportunities at Blue River, by far it's the fishing and mostly the trout that draws so many people to its clear waters. Today, we'll spend a little time on the Blue River. A little later, we'll tag along with a local songwriter and discover the role the river has played in his life and his songwriting. But first, Blue River is most associated with its incredible trout fishing opportunities each winter, attracting anglers from all over the country. My name's Matt Gamble. I'm a fisheries biologist with the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. We are at the Blue River Public Fishing and Hunting Area. This is uh, one of the most unique areas that the Department of Wildlife owns in that it is a high volume fishing area. It's a seasonal trout fishery and it also provides a lot of access for hunters and campers, really various activities that uh, all come together here. Today we are at Greer's Ferry National Fish Hatchery in Heber Springs, Arkansas. We are picking up approximately 5,400 rainbow trout to take back to the Blue River for stocking. Part of these fish will go into the Blue River and the other half will go to the Durant State Fish Hatchery for stocking at a later date. It takes around six hours one way for the trout trip, so our personnel spend many hours on the road coming here to pick up the trout. Rainbow trout are not native to Oklahoma, so in order to provide opportunity for anglers to catch trout, we have to go get trout. Uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service provides trout uh, to the state of Oklahoma as part of mitigation for putting dams on rivers and streams in Oklahoma. The partnership that we have with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service who provides these trout is a very important partnership because as one agency we can't do it alone, so if we're able to get unique species to our anglers in the state, and it provides an opportunity in the winter when most people aren't out fishing, they're able to go with their family. When we stock, there are approximately 30 locations throughout the six and a quarter miles of river access that we have. The personnel from Durant Fish Hatchery actually goes up to the Greer's Ferry National Fish Hatchery in Heber Springs, Arkansas to pick up the fish the day before we stock. That is one of the reasons we don't give out the stocking days because sometimes the logistics to that can, can uh, cause things to change. But once they bring the fish to us, we then distribute those fish to one other hatchery truck and then to a smaller trailer. That way we're able to get the fish spread out along the entire 30 sites of, of uh, stocking. So the trout program at Blue River is probably one of the most popular activities that we put on. Uh, once a week from November 1st through the middle of March, we stock anywhere from 2,000 to 4,000 rainbow trout. It comes up to about 60,000 rainbow trout over the course of the season. 
We do that once a week, sometimes twice a week. We do not give out the dates in advance uh, just because of variables that could come into play like weather, equipment availability, crew availability. So sometimes those dates are fluid and they change. So we feel like it's best just to let everyone know that we do stock once a week. And uh, it's really not necessary to fish on or after a stocking day. We put so many fish in that uh, there will still be some left over the following week. So really any time that you can fish is a good time to come. Don't, don't worry about a stocking day. Blue River is very unique in that it is a spring fed river that comes from uh, the Arbuckle Simpson Aquifer. A lot different from the high bank, muddy, turbid rivers that you see a lot in central Oklahoma. Typically it's very clear a lot of cascading waterfalls over uh, uh, granite outcroppings, numerous braided channels that are, are shallow that, that go through islands and uh, different features. My name is Scott Dittner and we're at the Blue River in southeastern Oklahoma. I feel like it's the best trout fishery in, in Oklahoma. We've got six and a quarter miles of very fishable water. We have a variety of water. We have big big pools, small small areas that you can fish. It's a, a beautiful spot. It reminds me of when you go to Colorado, New Mexico, and you're, you're right here in Oklahoma. So far we're fishing uh, at Hughes Crossing. Uh, it's, it's one of the, it's kind of the main parking, uh, main spot where a lot of people, you can spin cast, you can fly fish, and it almost uh, it has accessible spots for, for almost anyone. Now we're going to go to the South Wilderness, what we call the Wilderness Area, and it's a walking area, and it has a, it's a, has about a mile of, of river access that you can walk along the river and fish along different spots, and it, it's probably my favorite spot on the river. There's six and a quarter miles of, of river on the blue that you can fish for the trout. Fly fishing reminds me of uh, when I was a little boy and my brother and I, we had a cane pole and go out and fish. And this is a lot fancier cane pole. That's basically what we do, get on a creek and take our cane poles and, and go, go along the creek and find a pocket of perch and every now and then a, a, a bass and, and catch them along, along my grandpa's creek. Probably the best advice that I would give a first time user to Blue River, whether you're coming to camp or fish, spend some time getting to know the area, uh, look over, take some time, drive around the campsite so that you can find the specific site that you want. I have some friends come over with me that, that spin cast and catch just as many fish. And I mean, they're all the way from from flies to to, to power bait that people use, and just depends on where you're at and what type of fishing you want to do. And the bait casters, a lot of times, you're you're throwing out to one spot and just let it set until they come find it. I rather I rather fly fish where you find a current, let it drift through, and they come out and hit it as it goes by. It's a waiting staff and it saves me many a, a time in the Blue River. Uh, there's a lot of rocks and boulders, good structure for the fish to hide behind, but then it sometimes it makes it uh, a challenge getting to those spots and, and a waiting staff is essential for me. I've, I've, uh, I've been baptized several times here in the blue. Well, we're gonna see 
Uh, you know, the, the place we've been, there's been a lot of people already stacked up in a lot of the usual places. Uh, this is a place that once, once, once the fish move around, they come back here because there's a, there's a really good current. It's deep water. You can see there's some rocks for, their, for them to hide behind. Look at what we found. Oh, he's a nice one. That's a real nice fish this time of year. The, the, the fish this time of year are stocked from the federal program. And then in, in January, the state will stock. And the best part is it came out all by itself. Blue River Rainbow. I guess we should have changed flies sooner. He hit that bottom one. Uh, well, I fished from November all the way up until May. Like they quit stocking in March, but the the trout, we don't catch them all, and, and we've caught fish all the way up into into May. It's the only trout fishery in the state that's that's on a free flowing river like this, and and it has all different. You've got small pocket water, you've got big water, you know, uh, you can, uh, you feel like you're in New Mexico or Colorado fishing and, and it's right here in southeastern Oklahoma. It's a great location and it's, it's a beautiful spot. Uh, it's not overdeveloped. It's, it's a uh, primitive fishing area and uh, there, there's a great amount of, of water that's accessible to wade fish. Songwriter Roger Springer may not necessarily be a household name to most folks, but many of the songs he's had a hand in writing are. Artists like George Strait, Mark Chestnut, and even the late great Kenny Rogers have taken his songs to the top of the charts. And through the decades of songwriting, it's been the Blue River that has helped Roger keep his center and find inspiration for his craft. <laughs> This area right here with all these boulders and waterfalls and different runs, it's a beautiful area. Yeah, it's gorgeous. A lot of places to explore up here. I can't believe that there's not more people up here smallmouth fishing this. I know. There's no there's... other place like it in the state of Oklahoma, I don't think. No, I mean, there's a ton of different 
Like all these pockets and waterfalls, and all, all these pools hold smallmouth and spotted bass. Yeah, I grew up in Caddo, Oklahoma, uh, raised by a father who worked at Potter Sausage, and that's where I started my life out at Potter Sausage when I was 19. Worked there for seven years, moved to uh, Nashville to get into music business, and did. And uh, I've been in Nashville for 25 years, and a year ago, moved back here to the river. I think this is the hidden secret of Oklahoma. It's definitely the hidden river. gem of southern Oklahoma. Not many other rivers that no. have this, the water clarity and the fishing quality. Yeah. And this, yeah, I mean, it, you know, you look either way, I mean, some of the most beautiful scenery you'll get anywhere around Oklahoma. It sure is. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was early as like 12 or 13 years old. I started piddling with a guitar and uh, playing a banjo a little bit, just playing, uh, trying some different instruments, a little bit of piano, but a guitar I started falling in love with. And I probably wrote my first song when I was 13, 14 years old. So I don't know, it was just always there. I, I can't explain it. I mean, I knew early on in life that that's what I wanted to do. It just took me a little while to figure out how to get there. And uh, I started playing clubs, you know, in my early 20s here and saving money and, and saved it for the purpose of moving there and getting into music business. And, uh, you know, and then hindsight got extremely lucky, met the right people. That's a nice fish. Yeah, always fighting well. Yeah. Man, this old fish hit hard. When he hit that bait, I thought it was gonna be a little bit bigger fish, but that's a good start to the day. That's a good start to the day. He broke the ice. There's a lot of these size fish in here. Yeah. You can catch a, you can make a day out of catching these kind of fish. Got good color. Any city, I mean, Nashville being no exception, any city is just, uh, full of traffic jams and people and people busy doing their jobs. I mean, I was one of those for many years and uh, to be able to step out of that, for me, being a country boy and a country songwriter, being able to step out of that and grab my fishing pole and sit here on the river and fish, catch trout or catch catfish in the summertime, uh, it's just a, uh, it's just so peaceful here. It's just no cars, no traffic jams. I can come out here and sit find my peace of mind again. Oh, that's a nice one. There's a nice little smaller right there. Over here. Yeah. Well, they fight good in this current. That's a pretty there. fish. That's a... There you go. Quick release. Quick release. Well, we're getting started now. There'll be a fish laying right here. I've traveled through lots of places, seen lots of folks, lots of faces, even settled down a time or two. I've worked a farm, I've been to town, guess you could say I've been around, but I ain't never seen no one like you. And I can tell by your smile you don't believe a word I say, you're thinking I'll just stay a while then be on my way, but girl I think it's fair to warn you, I done been to California, I ain't never seen no one like you. Uh, I Ain't Never Seen No One Like You was a song I co-wrote with Mark Chestnut back in 1996. Uh, we had originally wrote the song for Mark to record and after we got through with it and got it demoed, we realized how much it sounded like a George Strait song. Hey, I eat the news and twins in Denver, stayed with them one cold December, but I ain't never seen no one like you. And I can tell by your smile you don't. Now, two or three weeks later, George recorded the song and it was on the Blue Clear Sky album. 
And uh, that album sold three million records, so Mark and I both were thrilled to be on that album. Oh, yeah. I ain't never seen no one like you. Come on, Greg. seen no one like you and I can tell by your smile you don't believe a word I say you're thinking I'll just stay a while then be on my way but girl I think it's fair to warn you I done been to California I ain't never seen no one like you hey now girl I think it's fair to warn you I done been to California I had a lot of songs recorded by different people. Jo uh, Clay Walker, George Strait, Mark Chestnut recorded 27 of my songs. Uh, Merle Haggard and I sung a duet together which, in 1999 on a uh, record deal I had on Giant Records. And that was another highlight of my career there to sing with Merle and Kenny Rogers, Tim McGraw, uh, Randy Travis, and uh, Josh Turner, Easton Corbin. Uh, so many of the you know my heroes have recorded my songs and. Uh, it's been, uh, it's been interesting. Here we go. Let me have him, I'll put him on my... <laughs> you just can't beat this. You can't beat this scenery and you can't beat being out here in the, in the, on the Blue River. You just, there's no place like it. This allows me to write better songs. When I can come out here and enjoy this and get it off my mind and, and soak up this stuff, then uh, when I do sit down to be creative, uh, this makes a world of difference. Mark Chestnut and I sat down in 1996 and uh, was writing for his greatest hits album. And uh, we wrote a song called It's a Little Too Late, which ended up being the first single off the greatest hits album. It went to number one and it was there, stayed there two weeks in a row. And uh, over the years, It's a Little Too Late has been played over a million times on country radio. So it's been a really big song. I guess it, today it'd be considered a standard. And it goes like this. Well, early this morning it dawned on me The kind of man she needed me to be she made a list and laid it there beside me on the bed. Now what I should have done keeps running through my head. Oh, I should have done this and I should have done that. Should have been there, then she'd have never left. Should have been hanging on every word she ever had to say. But it's a little too late, she's a little too gone. She's a little too right, I'm a little too wrong. Right now would be the time to change, but it's a little too late. I would tell them everybody to come out and experience Blue River one time. If you do, you're gonna fall in love with it. It's just a wonderful place to be. If you got any country boy in you or country girl in you at all, you're gonna love the Blue River. This is a song that uh, Tim Johnson and I wrote together back in 1996. And uh, Mark Chestnut recorded it, and it was our second number one on Mark. A song called Thank God for Believers. Last night I came home again, three sheets to the wind, and broke the promise I swore I'd never break. And it came as no surprise to see the hurt in her eyes or the Bible on the table where she prayed. This time I thought for sure that she was good as gone. But she just wiped her tears away and put some coffee on. And I don't know why she even hangs around after all the hell i put her through and the times i've let her down she has more faith in me than anyone has ever found and heaven knows how much i need her 
Thank God for believers. Thanks for buying a fishing license. What the? I know, but listen. I want you to picture all the great things this simple purchase does. Like building public boat ramps. Keeping local waters clean so families can fish and swim. And maintaining a healthy fish population. What's mom doing? It also provides fishing education and activities for the kids. And funds long-term plans to protect our lakes and streams. Wow. Wow is right. Did you just... Did he... When you buy a fishing license, you do a lot. Because every dollar from a license purchase protects and maintains your local waterways for future generations to enjoy. Learn more at TakeMeFishing.org.